In one of my most recent videos, I dropped down into frame. That was a reference to one of my favorite transitional shots, and I want to talk about a few of them in this video. There's a lot happening in this scene, and there's legitimately no dialogue. She moved into this trailer with this guy who swept her off her feet and all in one scene with, like I said, no dialogue, it is shown that she was dropped into this situation and left for a younger toy. All the movies I'm talking about today have a dreamlike feel for different reasons. Hedvig is because it's a pretty interesting adaptation to a stage production. In another scene, Hedvig is explaining to the audience of a restaurant that they're playing in that Tommy Gnosis, somebody she previously had as a mentor E, learned everything he knew from her. She opens up the side door of this restaurant to show the blaring light of the arena next door. I don't want to talk about betrayal. I don't want to talk about my lawsuit against a certain <laughs> rock and roll icon, Tommy Gnosis, who by some freak coincidence is performing right next door at Bush Stadium. And to whom I taught everything he knows and has apparently forgotten about rock and roll. I can already see this as a stage production. Someone walks to the side of the stage, opens a door, and flooded light comes in and it's a really interesting way of representing a whole section of a scene that they can't even have on stage. On screen I think it translates into this awesome dreamlike feel. This next one's a small one but it's from Sorry to Bother You. This movie's pretty much filled with like trippy visuals and transitions and stuff like that. The main character is having to cold call people and is literally dropping into the scene a lot like the first clip we watched. Intruding in on the people that he's calling. Hey, um, Mr. Davison, a cash is green here. Sorry to butt. But after a few failures. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Costello. Yeah? Uh, this is Cash is Green. I know that you've enjoyed our uh, series on bird watching, so I wanted to call and, and help you out. I'm sorry, young man. We don't have any money. My husband's in the hospital. He's 73. He's got stage four cancer. The main character turns to a friend and voices his frustration. Really? You gonna stuff all those french fries in your mouth? I feel incompetent. I'm like an asshole doing this job. And in reality, that conversation is happening in another location. And that is a really interesting way of transitioning from one scene to the other. I love it. And this last one is from Birdman. Another movie pretty much filled with transitions. A lot of them made to be unnoticed. One of my favorites is in a scene where two characters are getting into bed and the camera goes underneath the sheets with them. As the set is being rotated to being in front of the audience. The two characters have a interesting conversation under the covers. I think I'm no, you're not. It's just that sometimes you don't consider other people's feelings. No, no, no. I'm getting a and once the sheets are finally ripped off of the characters, we are now in front of the audience exposed just like they are. And another interesting transition from sets. Kind of a combination of the first clip and second clip we watched. A little fun detail that I enjoy just because I'm a physical media collector. All three of the Blu-rays that I specifically own of these movies have sleeves. Birdman in this cool red one. And Red Case. Sorry to Bother You has a sleeve. And I have the Criterion version of Hedvig, but I'm still counting it, even though a lot of Criterion come in sleeves. Anyway, that's just a fun little detail I enjoyed. I hope you have a wonderful day.